Future Now Show. Brought to you by the Club of Amsterdam. Hey Futurists, it's me, Miss Metaverse, and welcome to the Future Now Show, brought to you by the Club of Amsterdam. We have a great show for you today. Joining us from Doha is Professor Peter Cochran, and also joining us is Andreas Walker. He is in Basel, Switzerland, and Andreas is an expert in strategic foresight and the president of Swiss Future. So, we're going to begin with Peter. Hi, Peter. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. It's uh, 45 degrees here. How about that? C, that is. Oh. <laughs> oh wow, that is amazing! Wow. Um, so, and I, I think you mentioned that there was a sandstorm as well, right? Yeah, it's um, it comes up uh, in the evening time, and all the cars are a nice uh, dusty color. So, there's no point cleaning your car right now; it uh, just gets covered in sand. Uh, so, for our viewers, can you explain where Doha is? Sure. This is in Qatar. It's one of the uh, states uh, in the Gulf and uh, if you look at the Gulf it's right uh, down towards the bottom if you're looking at a map it's on the left hand side and uh, it's got a coastline and my hotel room is looking out over that coastline very 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 nice great so please introduce your topic what I'm going to talk about is uh, simple no longer works um, as a species uh, we are here we have been born we have been designed to live in a world that's apparently straightforward and simple and linear and well behaved. We built an industrial revolution on the basis that very simple things would do the job. But that world is long gone and we've created a complex world, not just complicated but complex. We have uh, Things now, not happening slowly, but happening very, very rapidly, they're not disconnected, they are connected. And perhaps worst of all, they are networked or interconnected. So we see things not being linear, but being uh, non-linear. Things not behaving well, as we expect, but misbehaving and causing absolute mayhem. So a good example would be uh, a political decision uh, or a conflict decision that looks for a single solution to fix it. And politicians love this, but actually, if you look over a short or even a long period of time, very often very simple models result in uh, a catastrophic uh, outcome. To have a war and walk away and not uh, actually introduce any reparation or any help for the population leads to the sort of situation uh, that creates terrorism and, and further wars, further conflict. In our own lives um, we see uh, this manifest in a number of ways. Very gradually uh, your automobile is disconnecting you from the road surface. So in an old car you would feel every bump you would have some connection between the road and your your steering wheel but all the automation uh, all the subtlety that's being built in means that you can go around a corner with great confidence not knowing that you're just one mile an hour away from slipping right over the edge that, so that's those are a couple of, of physical examples now this also manifests itself uh, in the following way um, we are now manufacturing, shipping and uh, powering up over a billion sophisticated computing devices every year. We've never done this before so this is a billion mobile phones, um, tablets, uh, laptops and things of that nature wow. which are a billion. This is, this is really really big numbers. We're talking about 14% um, of the entire human race can have a brand new computer every year wow. and that number that number is increasing so uh, I, I'll, I'll give you some interesting numbers a new book is published every 13 seconds which one should I read okay a scientific engineering or mathematical abstract 
is published every 13 milliseconds. Which one should I read? Um, an update on the web is happening in much less than 13 microseconds. So we've got this overflow of information. The half-life of knowledge, of information, of truth. So this morning, you don't feel so well, and you go to see your doctor. It turns out your doctor actually graduated yesterday. About 50% of everything that doctors taught, learned, and understood is now wrong. So at the point of graduation, the half-life of the information now in medicine is such that half of, half of your knowledge, so you now have to think, good grief, my doctor's 40 years old and he graduated 20 years ago, what does he know? <laughs> um, so we now have uh, machines moving into that sector and it turns out machines are better at doing diagnosis of human beings, ailments than, uh, than actual human doctors are. So this is a, a real problem, uh, a surprising statement from an engineer and scientist. I will never read another book. For the rest of my life, I will never read another book. Why? It, because it takes five hours to read a book. Which one of these books published every 13 seconds should I read? I have to have a new mechanism. I need a new way of... of finding information, absorbing it. So here are my mechanisms, and, and I'll, I'll tell you how effective they are. First of all, uh, I've got a social network that extends in two hops to 30 million people. When I find something interesting, I post it. When they find something interesting, they post it. And so I've got 30 million people, if you like, uh, looking for interesting stuff in the sector where I work. The other interesting mechanism is I use the, uh, the inverted snobbery of the British. I will go to a party and they, they, they love to come up to you and say, have you read this book? And you say, no, I haven't. They say, well, you should. And I say, well, why? And then they give me a 10-minute exposition of what is in the book. And I have just saved four hours and 50 minutes. <laughs> how, cool, how cool is that? But seriously, um, I am struggling because... Uh, the half-life of information in my sector is between three and six months. So whilst a doctor is enjoying the luxury of about three and a half years of half-life, and whilst the mathematicians uh, have got a half-life of about 50 years, and physicists have got a half-life of about 13 years, you find that the marine biologists have got a half-life of knowledge of about three months. And the reason is, marine biology is a new science and there's virtually nothing known and so new material is being added so very quickly as we discover new things. Uh, how do we get around this? Well, Google is both brilliant and useless at the same time. It, I mean it's absolutely an incredible machine but what use something that says to me you have just searched for topic artificial intelligence there are 37 and a half million publications, and here are the first 10. That's no good to me. What I need is an artificial intelligence that observes what I'm doing, what I'm working on, what I'm writing, what I'm reading, and it goes out and finds stuff that is pertinent to that line of work I'm engaged in. Yes. Now, there's another, there's another feature of this that's really important, and it's what I call the truth engine. Because uh, truth, people think of as an absolute, and truth is not an absolute. And I'll give you some examples. The truth was, in the Middle Ages, that the sun rotated around this planet. This planet was uh, a sphere. Um, this planet was the center of the universe. Uh, none of that is true. This planet is not a sphere. It's oblate. It is not fixed in shape. It changes with, with, with orbit and proximity of other planets. So we, we, through science, through measurement, we've observed a lot of things. It was true that helicopters don't fly upside down. They do now. 
So the, our knowledge, our wisdom is, is always changing. So I am looking at machines that will give me that capability and I can tell you now that in the not too f distant future there will be a truth engine that you will be able to employ. Uh, you can already access artificial intelligence that will help you as a doctor or a clinician in the United States. And if you want to have a look at some cool technology, take a look at the IBM debating engine. Because you can ask that question like, give me the pros and cons of children uh, playing on violent computer games. And if you watch that, uh, I think it's on uh, YouTube, if you watch that video, it is quite stunning the way the machine argues the case in exactly the same way that you and I would. Only it does it faster and it does it better because it goes out and finds about 13 million articles and then brings out about 3,000 paragraphs, then identifies about um, 1,000 sentences that are important and then collects them together and uh, presents the, the case for and against. So those are the technologies that I am clutching at to try and help me as a professional scientist and engineer to do my job. It's for me the next big piece of my toolkit. It's the next big capability. And so rather than becoming afraid of AI and robotics, I am absolutely desperate to embrace them because I need a partnership with an AI engine and the primary reason for all of this is uh, mathematics no longer works for most of the problems I look at. Um, linear assumptions in terms of material behaviors and system behaviors do not uh, work and we are getting surprised by emergent behaviors. So here is one example of this. An ant colony, you can define the behavior of an ant, but you have no idea what the behavior of the colony is going to be. Uh, you can look at the behavior of the colony, but you can't decide what the rules of each ant are. So we have a one-way process. Uh, we're, we're unable with our analysis, with our analysis techniques, to actually work back from behaviors to what happens. And so this applies directly to things like um, the behaviors of crowds, the behaviors of people on mobile devices, behaviors of people on the internet, uh, behaviors on stock markets. All of these things tend to fall into this nonlinear category where we are bluntly struggling to be able to characterize the behavior. That's the challenge. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for sharing that. So Andreas, Simple no longer works. Do you agree? <laughs> it sounds like paradise, or as in the German fairy tales, we call it the country of Schlaraffia. I think we have two ways we may discuss now. I'm living in Switzerland, and we are part of the Swiss, German, Austrian culture. And we have a phenomenon in, a, in our countryside. We call it the German Angst. The Swiss, the German, and the Austrian people, they are afraid of the future. It even may become worse. Artificial intelligence is a danger, robotics is a risk. And uh, in Switzerland, we have done a survey with the Swiss future. We have done an empiric survey beyond the population, and we have asked them regarding their understanding of technology. And we have found out that one third of our population is techno feel. They always have the newest iPad and the newest iPhone. Another third part of Switzerland is techno phone. They still do not have an iPhone. And as typical Swiss, a third part of Switzerland, they haven't decided now. So I think we clearly have to understand progress is a progress. As we've speaking about longevity, as we are speaking now, we have such a lot of benefits from technical progress, from medical progress, we become, uh, f uh, knowledge is cheap, information is cheap, travel is cheap, uh, look back 50 years or even 100 years, there was only a small, small elite part in the world who has had this knowledge, 
who has had this luxury, what is self-understanding nowadays. So our generation, we really see progress is a good thing. But on the other side, we are realizing that we have the end of the epoch of the Homo sapiens. The way we are thinking comes to an end because the world is too complex. The way we are solving problems comes to an end because the world is too fast. As you have explained in a phenom in an excellent way. Let me tackle it by a different way. I am father of four kids. And so always my kids, they are buying new computer games. And it's always the same. We have these games. And um, also as a father, I am in a challenge with my kids. So I also have to play this game. I play it one time. And then I think and I analyze and I try to understand what are the rules of these games. I play it a third or a second time. And then after understanding the rules of the game, I will win the game. Great. But in the same time, my kids, they have a totally different approach. They just play and play and play and play and play and play and play, and play the game. At the end, perhaps, they have done hundreds of mistakes, but at, the, but at the end, they are winning, too. And they are even faster as I am. So I understand they have a new approach of how to deal with problems. And J, um, the problem is they still are in the typical Swiss school. So they have to learn math, for example. And sometimes I am learning with them their math rules. And I really realized they have a different approach of thinking. So I'm curious regarding future. I see they find new approaches of thinking. They find new approaches of communication. I am already a digital uh, immigrant. They, as digital natives, they are very quick. And for them, it's no more a job. A lot of problems are just gaming for them. And me, as an old father, I realize I become very, very old because I take it all very serious. And the young, young kids, they are playing, and at the end, they are faster as I am. Mm. It's true. It's, it's, there is a lot of generational differences, and it's easy to see it. I mean, it's, it's incredible how fast kids are and, and thinking and moving with the games and technology. and. It's a lot to keep up with. So what are some solutions that we have? Or I mean, I know Peter said that you know artificial intelligence, we could have these artificial intelligences helping us, almost being like our virtual assistants, helping us get the information, the truth that we want or that we need. How do you feel? Do you think that artificial intelligence might be this one big solution to help us with these problems that we're having right now with uh, basically with just everything, that this complex world that we live in. There's no think... silver bullets anymore. There are no single solutions at all. Uh, you, you put your finger right on it. Everybody is thinking that I can find a solution to this. And in actual fact, you, you find that you need three, four, five components. And the key to it all is uh, to look at the technology, no matter what it is, give a try, and then make a judgment call. Does this improve my life or not? Does this make me feel good or not? And don't don't wear an, uh, uh, an electronic wristwatch, an, an eye watch, or whatever it is, because it's fashionable. Wear it because it gives you some advantage, some improvement. Uh, and that's a much better way than subjecting yourself to technological torture. I think we have a very special new situation now. We may come back to really discuss the basic questions of life. In the last decades, we have spent it times and times to learn math, to learn natural science, and so on. And now a lot of these topics are better done by computers. They are calculating faster. They are calculating better. But at the end, we are coming really to basic skills and basic virtues. If we are working in cyberspace with the information, at the end, the question is, is this information true or not? That's a very basic question. If this information old or new, it's a 
basic information. And the people sitting in front of me, is he a friend or an enemy? So we see now also with the, um, with the generations and with the artificial intelligence, we need a, a new culture of co-working. It's not the deus ex machina. It's not the artificial intelligence who is doing all for us. We are not Schlaraffia. I think you all know this science fiction movie of um, the time machine, where at the end the machine is organizing the whole life, and at the end the machine is eating up the human beings. I think we have to find this uh, situation of co-working. What is doing the machine? What is doing the people? And what is the interface? Of, um, of the generations. I realize that the young people, they are very fast, they are very quick, they are very clever, but this, uh, I'm already speaking as an old man. <laughs> I, well, I, I think you're yes, speaking now about wisdom, what is true, who is an enemy, mm -hmm. uh, what, is the, uh, what is the quality of the sewers? And I, th I see also in school, uh, they have to learn things like, like that now. It's, we, are talk, been, we start to talk about word use. Yeah, but we've been here dozens of times before. The difference yeah. is this is faster. So if you go back yeah. through history, um, people were smashing up uh, cotton jennies and um, knitting machines. Uh, it was taking away their jobs, and uh, they didn't like it. And uh, it, it's embedded in our history. The problem is it's now occurring incredibly quickly. And I think that you're right about co-working, but a member of the team is going to be an AI engine. Because if you build a... If we went back to the Renaissance, there were no scientists and engineers and technologists or artists. It was all the same thing. You were an artisan. You did all of it. Now if you meet a physicist, you ask the question, what kind of physicist are you? Are you a theoretical physicist? Are you a nuclear physicist? Whatever. And so we're educating people down soda straws that are getting thinner and thinner and thinner. They're knowing more and more about less. And so we need to reverse that because to solve the problems that we now face as a species, we need a broad uh, understanding and appreciation of many, many things. And I absolutely agree with you. Uh, we, we were educating people. Um, and you will recognize this from your age. The champions in the class, when you were at high school, who were the ones with a good memory, who could remember facts, and the ones who could take a problem that was well defined, and they could remember the process of turning the handle and getting the answer. You don't find any of those people in science and engineering. So I'll give you a strap line. You might like this. The ability to solve problems now trumps pure academic attainment. Industry is starting to search out people that are not the Harvard graduate, that are not the Oxford graduate. They may be, but what they're searching out is people who can solve the problems. And those people tend to be rather more multidisciplinary, uh, wider thinking, and they go and find, like your children, the necessary tools on the net, in the cloud, and that is, I think, the next step. You go get the tool for the job. Personally, I think AI is going to be the biggest metaphoric screwdriver or hammer that we've seen uh, for a long time. Yeah. Well, you realize that we have all the abilities we have learned in school which are out of use. We have spent days and days to learn how to read your map to come point A to point two. Nowadays, everybody has a name, has a navi. On the other side, we have spent years to learn French words, how to spell it. Now we have Bubblefish or Google Translation, and it's doing like that. And even calculating, we've learned to calculate by our head and our head, and now everybody has a machine to do it. We yep. really have to reinvent yep. the interface between the human being. And the, uh, and the machine. And I totally agree with you. In, in, in our time, we didn't learn to think. We just copied methods. Now we have really the challenge to learn how to think, because we have new situations. Yeah. Andreas, can I ask you a fun question? OK. 
when you were at school, did you did you do logarithms? Yes, it's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Do, do, do you have any idea why you did logarithms? Because they asked me for, and they want to get a good remark. <laughs> yeah. You you have they they didn't tell you. They never told you why you were doing it. Throughout the, the throughout the whole planet, I've tried this in every society, and nobody knows why they did logarithms. And, and all people at your age and mine did them. It was something you had to know. And now let me ask you the second fun bit. When you left school, did you ever use logarithms ever in your life? Since school? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I have. I have. Okay. And, the, and the reason is, I understand what they are. Okay. I, 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 I struggled learning the mechanism, but I understood what they were. And they turn out to be phenomenally powerful. But you're not going to get it in general from a school teacher at a at a at a high school. They teach process, but they, it's what I call solving problems by turning handles. And when my children were young, I had a program at home called solving problems by thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And so well, they would learn to solve problems by turning handle, handles during the day at school, but at home at night we used to sit down and think about how to solve a problem. And it's an entirely different mechanism. It involves creativity. Sounds good. I'll have to write that down. <laughs> I tell my toddler, okay, you have to solve all these world problems tonight. <laughs> 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 All right, sounds great. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share before we go? Well, I'm I'm very optimistic about the future on uh, both topics in the long term. But you know what? I think Andreas has put his finger on a couple of buttons. It's about the response time of a society. Some societies see a technology and go with it real quick. Uh, America is one such. You. If you walk down the street wearing a spacesuit, everybody would want to try it. If you were in Switzerland and you walked down the street in a spacesuit, everybody would cross the road to avoid you. And so uh, there are those, there are, you know, some societies more conservative than the other. But sure as eggs are eggs, we're all going to have to step up to the plate, try the technology, and decide where it's best used. I agree. How about you, Andreas? Right. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a great show. And stay tuned for more, the Future Now show. And let's go build a better world. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And stay tuned for more. Bye. 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 <laughs>